Hi, I'm David Ireland, the Wildlife Man. Welcome to episode 16 of the Wildlife Man podcast. Today's story is titled Searching for Dragons. Now today's story is sponsored by Kess Gallery. They have the most amazing aerial photography of the Sydney region. Now my goal in our film expedition was to find and film an extremely rare dragon-like creature that lives in the deep, dark, underwater caves and caverns of Kangaroo Island. Kangaroo Island is Australia's third largest island and has huge areas of untouched wilderness and pristine marine environments. Here we will search for our dragon, but first we will try to encounter as many of Kangaroo Island's exotic creatures as possible, both on land and underwater. When Matthew Flinders became the first European to discover this island in 1802, his crew killed 31 kangaroos, the first fresh meat they had had for weeks. Flinders named the place Kangaroo Island, but Aborigines discovered this paradise many thousands of years before Flinders, and they also enjoyed kangaroo meat. I am keen to search for our dragon, but it's a marine creature, and there are many more land animals we need to encounter first. Now, Kangaroo Island is an amazing place to explore. It has a huge diversity of environments, from salt lakes to dunes to forest and heathlands and the most fantastic rugged coastline. Now, before we started searching underwater for the dragon, we wanted to explore Kangaroo Island itself. And it wasn't long before we found koala. In fact, Kangaroo Island had something like 60,000 koala population before the recent bushfires, when many thousands of these beautiful animals were destroyed. What we have here is a big male koala. It's very difficult to get close to one in the wild. In fact, I've never been this close to a koala in the wild. Normally they are so far up a gum tree, you just can't get anywhere near them. I'm going to try to. Uh, now, are you going to let me climb up to you? Are you? Can I climb up to you and say hello? Now, a big male like this, they've got very, very sharp claws and they're incredibly powerful. In fact, believe it or not, they might look cuddly, but a wild koala can take your face off. Now look at this. This is the closest I've ever been to a big male koala. I'm going to try something you probably shouldn't do. Can I just give you a look? Oh, all right, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, was that itchy there, was it? <laughs> Can I touch you again very gently? Oh, is that itchy there? Is that itchy? Hey? Hello, mate. Hello, aren't you a big boy? It's a little bit itchy there, isn't it? Hello. Hello. These are wonderful creatures. They're a marsupial. When he was born, he was not much bigger than a jelly bean, and he developed in his mother's pouch. Look at him. Is that itchy, is it? Look at him. Hello. They're amazing creatures. They mostly feed on eucalypt trees, eucalypt leaves, which are high in fibre and low in energy. So these creatures sleep for maybe 70% of the time. Hello, mate. But we've lost many of the koalas on mainland Australia, mostly through habitat destruction. 
but there are plenty here on Kangaroo Island. Now koala are rather intriguing strange animal. Did you know that the joey actually eats its mother's poo up to six months after birth and it gains bacteria from the mother which helps prepare the little joey for a lifetime of feeding on eucalypts. The joey also gains nutrition by getting milk from the mother's teeth which is inside the pouch. Now while forward driving through the dunes, we encountered the sand goanna, and they are actually the largest native predator on Kangaroo Island. Yeah, come on, Andy, come get rid of that rock. No, we don't hurt you. Now look at this guy, this is a young one. But you can see on the tail there, that this beautiful creature is shedding its skin. Now like all these reptiles, as they grow older and grow bigger, they shed their skin. If only us humans could do that, there'd be no need for plastic surgery. If we could just shed our old skin and grow new underneath. See that pointy, pointy head? That allows these animals to get into carrying, into the carcass of dead animals and also that head being that shape allows them to get into the smallest crevices in rocks, in dead hollow trees of course, and also in the ground in burrows. And we'll let this little bloke go too. I just got to ask you a question. Do you like being on television? Yes. You do, do you? <laughs> all right, we'll let you go too, all right? I'm sorry if I upset your burrow in your morning. I might put you down here and we'll let you run off. Don't you bite me. And not yet, not yet, not yet, don't you bite me. Go. Now they are well equipped to finding their prey. Now the sand goanna has excellent sight and also a forked tongue which allows them stereo scent to find their prey. They have very powerful limbs very sharp claws and needle sharp teeth. Now their prey consists of baby possums and penguins, even mutton birds and bird eggs, and even snakes. Now Kangaroo Island has two venomous snakes, the tiger snake and also the copperhead snake. And I did manage to find a small juvenile tiger. These snakes are highly venomous. And on Kangaroo Island, they will search out the burrows of mutton birds and also penguins. My intrusion here has disturbed a deadly reptile. Picking it up by hand is extremely dangerous. I will have to continually shake down the lethal head to stop it striking. Oh, 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 oh. this is one, one more of these black tigers. And I am so cautious with these guys because he could easily kill me. And believe me, these are a very, very dangerous snake to handle because they can strike the hand that, that holds them. Just a wonderful, wonderful snake. Look at him. Very, very, very venomous. All right, okay, I'm gonna let you go. You wanna bite me, don't you? You really do, you want to bite me. Just calm down. There, now calm down. Just be gentle. Ah. An interesting thing about these snakes is here on Kangaroo Island, there are lots of goannas. And a goanna can actually grab hold of one of these snakes and kill it. Which I find amazing because the venom in these tigers is so toxic. So how the old goanna comes up and kills one of these is beyond me. Don't you come back at me. Come on. I've got to stay alive. I've got four sons, okay? And a beautiful wife, so you've got to be gentle with me. Yeah. You're coming down beautifully. Calm down. You want to go now? Off you go. 
Africa. Now, Kangaroo Island gets its name from the thousands of kangaroos that live there. But also, there is the little tamar wallabies. And these are cute little fellas. Now, we did find a young tamar wallaby. But sadly, it was dying. It was obvious it had been bitten by a snake. And most probably a tiger snake. So, I couldn't let it just die over the next hour or two. So, I humanely put it down. Now, sadly, like mainland Australia... Kangaroo Island is infested with feral cats and they cause extreme problems with native animals. Now thankfully a program of trapping these feral pests exists on Kangaroo Island and let's hope it continues because they are a major cause of local extinction of native animals. So then it became time to go searching for the dragon. We hired a boat and scuba gear, we had our underwater cameras, and we ventured out along that rugged coastline. We were very lucky to find one of the most magnificent animals, the Australian sea lion. And this young fellow was actually hauled up on a rock. So what I did was I swam over on the surface and did something rather funny. I started asking that sea lion if he would come in the water and join me. And he did. This magnificent young Australian sea lion joined me in the water and actually performed for my camera and was as fascinated with me as I was with him and continually came right up to my face. His beautiful big eyes, his whiskers, just the most beautiful creature. Our sea lion is free to swim away, but chooses to come to me. It displays its belly in a gesture of friendship and trust. It's most important I do not stress this animal in any way. Adults can dive down 200 metres or more to feed on crustaceans and squid. These are the rarest sea lions on earth and are sadly declining in numbers. National parks enthusiastically protect breeding colonies of sea lions in South Australia. But more funding and research is urgently required to save these precious marine mammals. Sea lions rival dolphins with their curiosity with humans. At his choosing, I am within touching distance. And he is allowing me to film him at extremely close range. His vision is extremely acute. Rounded lenses and highly developed retinas allow excellent underwater vision. His whiskers allow for additional tactile senses. I do not know if this highly developed 
an intelligent mammal can sense my feelings for him. But again and again he returns to me and gazes directly into my eyes. The Australian sea lions have excellent eyesight, especially in the dark, deep ocean. And their whiskers can even pick up vibration of prey, especially squid. Sadly, sea lions will attack lobster pots. And in the old days, the lobster fishermen did shoot them and even used their carcasses for bait. Thankfully, that no longer occurs. Now that sea lion came up to me again and again and we managed to actually film the sea lion swimming through the shafts of light that came down through a hole in the roof of the cave. Just the most amazing footage. As the sun backlights his head, his white fur glows and when he swims through the shafts of sunlight, he becomes almost angelic. must do all we can to passionately protect these animals from extinction. We search day after day, dive after dive with no result, always concentrating our efforts in the underwater caves and grottos where there is limited groundswell and the ocean is very, very still. We did encounter blue groper. These are actually a ras and a strange creature because they're all born females and the most dominant will become a male and get much bigger and turn this magnificent blue colour and I couldn't resist taking one of the many lobsters there and feeding it to the groper and he crunched it up with his peg-like teeth. On the last day and the last dive I'm in 60 feet of water, swimming over this kelp bed in the base of a large grotto. And my lights illuminate my dragon. It's a leafy sea dragon related to the seahorse. It has the most magnificent olive-tinted appendages. The appendages give this creature almost perfect camouflage in the kelp. They're such a delicate beautiful, storybook-like creature. They are a true dragon. Leafy sea dragons are almost impossible to see in kelp, and with only five individuals ever been sighted in this remote bay, our chances of an encounter are very poor. But then, a leafy sea dragon is in my lights. His leaf-like appendages disguise his outline and protect him from predation by rats. This precious cousin to the seahorse feed only on tiny shrimp-like creatures called amphipods and amazingly during mating the female deposits some 200 eggs into a brood patch under the male's tail. He carries and protects the eggs until they hatch. As a child I was in awe of fairy tale stories of dragons and yet here is a creature with a head, body and tail shape that is unmistakably dragon-like. I have never seen a more enchanting creature in my life. I promised you if we found our dragon, you would remember it for as long as you live. Hopefully, you will. Now I've devoted much of my life filming wildlife and showcasing the plight that native animals face trying to survive in a modern world. 
the leafy sea dragon is an example of an extremely rare, magnificent creature and one that deserves all our protection. I invite you to be a Wildlife Man podcast supporter. Now, your contributions can greatly assist us with the expense of weekly Wildlife Man podcast productions. Now, there are some amazing benefits, so please check out my Patreon page. There are numerous options available, and they start from as low as $4 a month. Every week, we will publish a new Wildlife Man podcast. So, if you enjoy, please subscribe. Please share, like, and ring that notification button so you never miss a new story being published. And remember, all my films are available streaming on demand from Vimeo. So that's it from me till next week. I am your wildlife man.